Hello guys, in this episode I will show you how to make this USB load tester, but what does it actually do? I'm glad you asked. You can use it to measure the output of a power bank, the charging quality of a USB cable, the power consumption of a USB device, the charging rate of a mobile phone and much more. This device is equal to a USB tester plus a USB dummy load. These are the components I'm going to use, you can find the list in the video description. And this is the schematic for the device. We need an USB plug, I will salvage it from this USB Bluetooth adapter. And I will use the USB port from this card reader circuit board. Here we have two similar panel voltmeters and ammeters, but the left one is more precise than the right one. Below 10 volts it has two decimal places instead of one. But how can we distinguish them? They look the same. Usually the one with two thick wires has one decimal place and the one with three thick wires has two decimal places. I'm going to use this model. We have to make the device smaller so I will remove the casing. The dummy load will be made out of two resistors, they will get very hot so I'll use 10 watt resistors. According to Ohm's law, for one amp load we need a 5 ohm resistor. I didn't find 5 ohm resistors, so I've bought this 4.7 ohm resistors instead, but this will work to our advantage as I will explain later. The ammeter will be soldered to the perf board, the shunt is in the way, so we need to remove it, I will reposition it later. The connectors cannot be soldered to the perf board, I will replace them with pin headers. The shunt needs to be soldered on the other side but in the same position relative to the copper of the circuit board, because I don't want it to lose calibration. You can test it afterwards and if it's not calibrated anymore, it has a small potentiometer on the back to adjust it. The pin headers are intentionally bent to match the holes in a perf board. This small circuit board will be very crowded, I need to calculate very carefully where every component will be soldered, I'll start with the USB port. The LEDs will receive 220 ohm resistors, which will be mounted under the ammeter circuit board. I'll use a small piece of double-sided foam tape to keep the corner of the ammeter circuit board stable and protect the IC. I solder two of the five pins to keep the circuit board in position. Then I cut all the pins to a shorter length and solder them to the perf board. We need some wires, these are left over from my power supply project. It will be difficult to explain to you how I've soldered all the wires on the perf board. The important thing is to follow the schematic. Let's test the voltmeter and ammeter display. It's still working, but you already knew that. The internal connections of these push button switches are a bit complicated. I've figured them out with a multimeter. Each one has two poles with two positions. I'll use both poles for each switch to make the connection better. I don't want to cross over the wires, so for the LEDs resistors I'll strip a wire and mount it on the other side of the perf board.
You are here. The switches and LEDs are working. It's time for the USB port. Bend the mounting pins, then solder them to the perf board. The load resistor pins will be soldered on the surface of the perf board, so I need to measure and cut them. Be careful when cutting these pins, you can poke an eye. I need to repair the damage I've done so far to the LED display. And of course we need to cover the LED display with the original semi-transparent plastic of the wattmeter to make it visible in daylight. I'll use two-part adhesive to glue it on the display. Here we have a power bank with an USB output of 1 amp. When I activate one load resistor, it shows us 1 amp. If I activate both resistors, it has a massive voltage drop and the power bank shuts down. So this power bank delivers pretty much what it's supposed to. Let's test this 2.1 amps power bank. 1 amp, almost, and 2 amps. Let's add another load to it. With both load resistors and the light bulb connected, the current draw exceeds 2.1 amps, but the voltage drops too much. After about 30 seconds of use, the load resistors are getting very hot, you need to let them cool down, but 30 seconds should be enough for this type of measurements. You can use 20 watts resistors instead, but I want this device to be as small as possible. Let's talk about the precision. Here we have a phone charger delivering 1010 milliamps. According to Ohm's law, it should measure 1.06 amps. Adding the 10 milliamps for the LED, we should have 1.07 amps. So where are the missing 60 milliamps? The voltage is above 5 volts, that's not a problem. Well, if we measure this simple wire, we notice that it has a resistance of about 0.8 ohms. That means that every wire on my circuit board, every soldering, switch, USB connector will add a small resistance to my load. Finally, it will compensate for the missing 0.3 ohms. I think the best example is this USB extension cable. I'll use this phone charger and one load resistor. The USB tester shows us 1 amp. But if I connect the USB extension cable, we lose 90 milliamps and some voltage. That's why I've used heavy duty cables for my power supply leads, I don't want them to alter my measurements. The thicker the wire, the lower the electrical resistance. For a DIY measuring device, I would say that's good enough. Optionally, if you want to measure the charging rate of a smartphone or tablet, you must add the data wires, because the mobile phone negotiates the charging rate with the phone charger through these wires. You can see the difference here. A good example of charging rate negotiation is the Samsung Adaptive Fast Charging. This is fast charging with 9 volts, see? And if you want to see some mechanical nerd in action, you can take a look at my other channel. Just click this link. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, you should click the like button and subscribe to my channel.